सर गुड इवनिंग as our chairman has joined so i think we we we, we start now uh, the time is already there 53 so hello good afternoon good afternoon good sir good afternoon. afternoon sir with your permission uh, shall we start sure sure thank you so much sir thank you very much uh, good afternoon good evening good morning uh, ladies and gentlemen based on your location where you are and on behalf of uh, qi center for laboratory accreditation myself dr b k rana ceo of qai welcome all our guests dignitaries and delegates to this uh, launch program for biobank accreditation as per iso 20387 uh, this program is going to create a history in our opinion in, to be leading uh, accreditation provider for biobanks in india and putting india to forefront of biobanking accreditation and quality uh, for biological specimen uh, with this i welcome uh, uh, professor vikram kumar who is our chairman for laboratory accreditation board uh, dr pramod kumar bajaj who is the chair of uh, technical committee uh, professor george dagger he is the convener of isotc 276 working group 2 Uh, Mr. Anil Jhari, a very dear friend, a colleague, and senior for last several years, and um, uh, we would be uh, joined by uh, Sri Upmanya Basu, who is Joint Secretary in DHD, and Dr. Praveen Malik, and Dr. Virendra Yadav, Technical Committee members, distinct guests, Professor Venkatesh Thupil, uh, our mentor, and uh, joining in all. So, uh, I welcome you all for this uh, in launch program. and it's my privilege and an honor to welcome you and it's really a, a, our honor to host you for a couple of minutes today and we are delighted that you have accepted and agreed to be part of this inaugural event for biobanking in india so with this i once again thank you all for joining in and i with the permission of the chair now i'll i'm taking the proceedings further with this uh, may i now request professor vikram kumar uh, who is the chair of qi's center for laboratory Accred accreditation uh, professor vikram kumar uh, has been uh, the director of csir national physical laboratory in new delhi he has also been the director of uh, crri and niscare in csir and also solid state physics laboratory in drdo he has been the professor and of department of physics center for applied research in electronics nano scale research facility in iit delhi currently he is also uh, dr raja raman a drdo distinguished fellow at solid state physics laboratory in delhi and he has been at, uh, a visiting professor to several national and international organization and most importantly he is the recipient of santi swarup bhatnagar award by csir which is the highest in the field of science delivered by csir he has been fellow of and he is currently the fellow of national academy of science and several other national and international societies in the field of science and technology he has been chair and member of several scientific and research national committees of different ministries and he has published over 200 research papers and guided over 30 phd and mtech students in his field with this i uh, welcome professor vikram kumar to deliver his uh, address floor is yours sir is my is on yeah my yes, sir. okay yes, sir. on so uh, well thank you uh, um, dr ranas i'm very happy to be part of this uh, very important occasion uh, that is the launching of accreditation of bio banks in india and uh, uh, why limit india i'm, I'm sure qi will start accrediting elsewhere also in due course so uh, uh it's it's a, as you rightly said it's a historical occasion um uh, as uh, i'm sure all the persons who are here uh, in the audience are aware that a biobank is a depository of biomaterials which have to be well documented uh, they serve a very useful purpose for our society 
it directly affect our health and uh, well being because all the r and d uh, for uh, developing uh, uh, medical techniques uh, in the uh, uh, drugs and so on they depend on availability of uh, well established catalogued uh, samples biological samples and therefore uh, and india has in a very thriving pharmaceutical industry it is very important that we have reliable sources of biomaterials and uh, bio banks uh, that's where they come in of course uh, bio banks are not just for human beings but also for uh, uh, animals uh, wildlife uh, plantation vegetation everything uh, gets involved in bio banks cattle is a very important uh, field in for india because india is the largest uh, one of the largest populations of cattle for example uh, research work of course uh, as we have recently seen in the development of uh, vaccines for the covid uh, it's extremely important we have done very well in this country uh, so for any disease any uh, epi epidemic uh, we need to have biomedical samples so biobanks act as a vault with intricate detailed information pertaining to the source from whom biological materials have been collected and uh, data collection and uh, proper cataloging of this uh, information is extremely important so that uh, we do not mix up things so the accreditation then plays a very important role uh, just like any other industry the accreditation ensures quality ensures uh, uh, the proper uh, documentation uh, provides uh, confidence in and facilitates uh, cooperation fosters uh, exchange assists in harmonization of practices among uh, different uh, uh, partners so all these uh, things are common to uh, any accreditation uh, system and it's very important for the biobanks that we have this accreditation available because in, in india we have All, all kinds of uh, people doing all kinds of things that uh, the systems are not so strictly uh, monitored in particular uh, so that uh, mixing up of uh, samples should not happen the you know the i do not know if any of you have seen that uh, uh, movie called the good news uh, with akshay kumar starer about a year ago Uh, where the sperm bank mix, made a mix up and to a very uh, uh, disastrous uh, consequences so uh, that should not happen and uh, i'm sure a good accreditation system that qai is going to provide uh, will ensure that uh, this is not happen we also will have to look for uh, policy from the government uh, icmr and dbt that uh, will make it compulsory mandatory for biobanks to be accredited uh, this is uh, actually accreditation is itself is quite a new thing in this country only about 20 25 year old and uh, accreditation of pathological labs and hospitals has started only just maybe 5 or 10 years ago uh, very recently uh, so uh, bio accreditation of biobanks should become mandatory just like the pathological labs uh, have become mandatory now uh, so that we do not have all these mix ups in future so with this uh, i'm looking forward to a great future for the qai for carrying out this uh, accreditation of biobanks in india and elsewhere with the with help of all the dignitaries present here in this audience
thank you very much uh, rana ji you please continue to next thank you sir thank you very much for your uh, wonderful opening uh, address and it is really um, great that uh, we could you know imbibe some of the principle which you have just mentioned and we would try to provide a presentation in a best possible manner to to our stakeholders so sir thank you very much once again with this i move on to the agenda and with this i would now like to invite uh, dr pramod kumar bajaj who is our uh, chairman of the technical committee uh, for biobank accreditation program and before i hand over uh, the floor to bajaj i just like to uh, introduce him uh, he holds uh, uh, mbbs degree and md microbiology he is member of uh, icmr committee to draft uh, assisted reproductive technology which call common in call art bill for last several years and he has been the consultant of uh, different countries on infertility and he brought the concept of sperm 360 labs in india in many other another part of the world as well and he has set up the first human sperm bank in delhi 1993 cryobank services in bangalore and mumbai in 1994 and 1996 respectively and he represented in european society of human reproduction and embryology the ashray and american society for reproductive medicine is asrm he is currently the managing director of sperm processor private limited and with this i i would request uh, dr bajaj to please uh, you know uh, give his address about current trends in need of accreditation program floor is yours dr bajaj thank you thanks uh, dr rana for kind introduction good evening to all dignitaries gathered here to zoom platform on the occasion of ceremonial launch of program of qi accreditation of biobank as per iso 20387 First of all, I want to congratulate QI team, leaded by Dr. Bhupendra Rana, sir, to take such a badly needed initiative, which take India on the research platform as a global innovator. As we all know, 21st century is the century of data, which is the foundation of all innovation, default in existing system and needed upgradation in the existing system. Acquisition of data from consent form. to output of in accordance with the permission from ethical committee needs well established process which accompanying documentation which is a well defined in the process of accreditation starting from accreditation of laboratory management iso 15189 and risk management iso 14971 and so on all this process need constant research material and accompanying data acceptable at global level in the process of global harmonization task force along with the iso organization created iso 20387 which addresses the working of biobank at global platform to help researcher across the globe to carry out their work without any disturbance implementation of iso 20387 in india was a need of time and this initiative has been taken by qai and they are professionally launching this platform for really they are helping the scientific community to gain the international recognition by opening the door for their achievement across the globe with these things i want to say that the constant need of such type of standard is to be going to be there now hand over to rana sir thank you sir thank you uh, very much let me see if i am muted uh, thank you sir thank you very much for your uh, wonderful remark and i think that makes sense and set the tone for our further proceeding that how important uh, it is to 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 establish credibility of any biological specimen and the data associated with that biological specimen to help researchers in 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 moving forward in their research and development activities in a very productive and fruitful manner so that they they avoid any wasted of time and, and the results are Uh, really significant uh, which we are looking so thank you sir thank you very much with this now we move on to the next agenda point which is about a uh, brief about qai and the accreditation process which we have developed and i would take this up with you all please permit me to share my screen yes so uh, this this today we are in, uh, Um, sitting at the time and the day that uh, we are launching accreditation program for biobanking as per ISO two zero three eight seven, 
Uh, QI started operating as an accretion body in August 2017, and it has become one of the fastest evolving accretion body uh, in healthcare as well as in conformity assessment. Uh, we have a vision to nurture the largest global pool of organizations and people through quality improvement and accreditation framework. And this vision we want to achieve through our mission, which is to conceive and deliver education, training, accreditation, and related programs in partnership with stakeholders using an approach of co-design and co-creation. Uh, Center for Laboratory Accreditation um, activities are uh, falling into different categories. We offer accreditation programs for medical laboratories as per ISO 15189 standard. We also offer accreditation to testing laboratories as per ISO IC 17025. And such labs include for food testing, forensic science, veterinary testing, and several other types of testing labs. We also offer QI certification for basic composite medical laboratory program, which is based on requirements prescribed in gadget notification by Ministry of Health and Family Welfare in relation to Clinical Establishment Act uh, passed in 2010. And today we are, we are here to launch our Biobank accreditation program as per ISO 20387. This is our organization structure. We have board of directors, we have advisory board supported by CEO. We have four verticals, Center for Education and Training provide education training activities in different areas. Center for Accreditation of Health and Social Care, CHSC provides accreditation in health and social care. We have 10 programs running. In last three years, we have developed eight accreditation standards and two standards have got internationally recognized by International Society for Quality in Healthcare, making QI the first and only accreditation body in India, having two standards accredited by ISCOA. And, in, and with this, that's why I was mentioning that we are the fastest growing accreditation body world over to that in view of developing standards and operating the accreditation programs. Center for Laboratory Accreditation, CLA, under which this biobank program sits and Professor Vikram is chair that. Center for Accreditation of Veterinary Facilities, this is the this is the center again working, a technical committee is working on developing standards for veterinary hospitals and, and pet clinics. This is our organogram of our Center for Laboratory Accreditation. It is a governing board. Uh, as I mentioned, the, which is chaired by Professor Vikram Kumar and supported by several other members. There is appeals panel, the CEO, and we have officers, technical committees, and accounts, and panel of assessors. It's, it's a typical um, structure of an accreditation body. We are an associate member of Asia Pacific Accreditation Cooperation, APAC, and we are also represented as a member of APAC Working Group on Biobanking. Uh, and uh, we are convener of a communication committee working group on health sector. I'm also leading as a convener of CPC working group on business sector. So th these are some of the involvement which QI is in APAC. Uh, as on date, uh, we have accredited about uh, 15 laboratories, both in medical as well as in testing all over the country. And out of these 15 labs, there are five government laboratories, including uh, Revis testing lab in Bangalore Veterinary College. And we are happy to announce that this level has achieved uh, international recognition by getting OIE referral laboratory status by OIE. OIE is the World Organization for Animal Health, which is like uh, WHO for human being. And uh, this lab becomes one of the first in Southeast Asia and 12th in the world, achieving the OIE referral status for revised testing. There are a couple of our uh, labs which we have uh, granted accreditation, including the Department of Biotechnology, uh, Rajiv Gandhi Center for Biotechnology, Veterinary Labs, and a couple of private laboratories as well. We publish a QI journal for healthcare quality and patient safety, and we would encourage people to submit articles related to quality and patient safety. Uh, and this is our third issue going on uh, maybe this month. We have already published two issues in the last year. Now, accreditation program for biobanking as per ISO 20387. Uh, we started with this program to develop uh, by constituting a technical co uh, committee of eminent experts. Uh, Dr. Pramod Kumar Bajaj is the chairperson of this technical committee, supported by Professor Chaitanya Pause, who is professor and head department of animal reproduction, gynecology, and obstetrics, postgraduate institute of veterinary and animal science in Akola. Professor Gulab Khitkar, he's director of Paul Howard Center for DNA Barcoding and Biodiversity Study. Dr. Babasaheb Ambedkar, Marathwada University in Aurangabad. 
Ms. Avirupa Kar, she is the biorepository manager in Tata Medical Center Biorepository in Kolkata. Dr. Usha Jain, who is a consultant of lab medicine and medical and genome sciences and, and supported by a secretariat. So these group of experts have uh, worked around in developing a, a guidance book uh, for ISO 20387, where a, a clarification or a further information are required. And uh, this is the scope of accreditation, which we have a uh, plan for now. Uh, and this has been developed in consultation with um, uh, accreditation programs available like A2L in USA, CNS, uh, China, and, and, and several other part of the world who are providing the repository services, not exactly the accreditation. So based on that, we come out with five types of um, biological source of material versus human being, then animals, plants, microorganism, and multicellular organism, which are neither animal nor plant, for example, fungi, brown seaweed, et cetera. And within this um, biological type of biological material, there may be n number of uh, combinations. There may be blood component, blood, blood products and blood components, tissues, body fluids, cell lines, gametes like sperms and eggs, genetic material like DNA, RNA, base products, etc. So these these would be uh, the the materials which would be uh, which are being you know. Uh, 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 kept in biobanks and are used for R&D purposes, similarly for animals and, and all. So these are five types of uh, biological materials and then different activities, for example, acquisition, collection and procurement of biological materials, preparation and processing, their testing, analysis, uh, preservation, storage condition, distribution, transportation uh, of the material along with related information and data and then disposal of material beyond a defined storage period, if any. So if they have crossed a defined storage time, so the, how they dispose it. So this is, these are the activities in typical biobank and what procedure they are, they are going to have it. They may be having for acquisition and collection, like receiving, tagging, accessing, or logging and examining for the appropriateness. And then in preparation about the labeling of the item, then testing like inoculation, sequencing, microscopy, uh, using different procedures and preservation like either in liquid nitrogen or flash freezing, freeze drying, ultra low temperature, formalin. So what type of uh, procedure they are using for preservation. So these are the procedures and methods to, uh, to conduct these procedures. Like, so they would, would be developing SOPs based on their own experience and, and, and the literature available for different procedures they are carrying out. So this is going to be our scope of accreditation for biobank to apply and for us to look and assess for them. Uh, this is the accreditation process which we have developed and uh, that so we have and developed an application form we have developed a self assessment toolkit based on based on iso 20387 which require um, the biobank to uh, go through the standards and say what documents they have and they give the cross references and then uh, whether they have implemented this or not so that will give them an, a chance and opportunity to look at the entire standard and see where they are in terms of documents implementation and implementation. And uh, so they apply uh, in the prescribed application form along with documents and, and fee. And then we at Secretariat would review and uh, give a registration number and acknowledge. And if there are any deficiencies in the application, we will uh, revert to Biobank to uh, re with request to complete those things. And then after this uh, the process is, step is completed, we in consultation with Biobank uh, uh, go for a, a final assessment by a constituted team of experts, the assessors, uh, um, led by a, a team leader, and, and then uh, as we would be having the assessment done of the facility in relation to 20387. That would generate a report and which will be reviewed by secretary for its appropriateness and adequacy. And if there are non-conformities defined that um, the Bio Bank would be given, a, will be given a 30 days period to address those non-conformities and submit an action plan along with the uh, evidences. And once that is done, then if, uh, if we will review it. And then based on that information, we will recommend for grant of accreditation and approval. It will go for to the chairman for approval. And then the accreditation certificate would be issued um, uh, to the bio bank. And it have six months before the expiry that the bio bank would be applying for the renewal. So this holds for two year cycle, and then we move on. And so each stage, we are in touch with the biobank. We provide feedback to them whenever required, and they can come back to us also if they need any information on that. 
This is our accreditation mark or accreditation symbol, which an accredited um, biobank uh, can use. It's a mark of sustained quality. And so this is, this is what um, uh, they can claim for uh, that they are accredited biobank. With this, I thank you very much for your um, uh, patience hearing on, on this. And so with this now, uh, just a moment, let me close this, please. Yeah. Okay. Uh, with this now, uh, thank you again. And uh, we move on to the next uh, agenda, uh, which is uh, to, to hear a user's perspective, why biobank accreditation is, is required. For this, we have a special invitee, Dr. Brind Kumar Yada. He is the manager of National Liver Disease Biobank, set up at Indian <coughs> Institute of Liver and Biliary Science, which is a, a, the Department of uh, Health Government of Delhi Initiative. And this biobank has been set up um, in, co in coordination with DBT and ILBS. So it's a, a state and central government initiative to set up a specific biobank for liver diseases. So Brindr is heading it for uh, since it was started. And Vrendra is also an expert in, in, in biobanking. He, he is also a, a, a regional ambassador for Indo-Pacific Rim of International Society for Biological and Environmental Repositories called ISBR. And he has experience of running biobanks for over 10 years in, 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 in different parts of the country, including, I think, Rajiv Gandhi Center for Cancer. So with this, I uh, invite uh, Dr. Vrendra to uh, share his thoughts. Over to you, Dr. Vrendra. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Rana. First of all, I would like to thank uh, you and the QAI team for good initiative. I was waiting for such type of accreditation body in India from long time. And uh, before moving, moving, I, as a Dr. Rana told that uh, I have a good experience in biobanking and uh, uh, this is the, I am working in a national liver disease biobank, <clears throat> and this is the first biobank, which, uh, which is accredited by the city or net Canada, because we don't have any uh, accreditation body in India. But uh, since uh, Dr. Rana has started to launch this accreditation body, so I am happy that we will, uh, we will move for the ISO 20387 accreditation in India. As we know that uh, the biobank, uh, the India has the more opportunity in biobanking. And there are some, uh, in coming years, there are more biobanks are came and some of the bio more biobanks are in plan to, uh, plan to be established. But there is no accreditation bodies. So, uh, so uh, there is no particular way that how other biobanks are collecting the sample. And as we know that time, time is a scarce resource and if it is wasted, it cannot be recovered later. So in the same way, doing research on low grade biosamples are wasted of its own time and money and also diverting many researchers from their way by publishing the results. And some of the journals research in the, by the nature and PL, PLOS1 have reported in one study that uh, uh, poor quality of biosamples, which often lead to unreproducible research result. Uh, as a result, numerous projects based on these research results, including those involved in drug development, were unusable and lead to enormous time and financial losses. So quality, quality is a central factor determining the success of a biobank uh, biobank and which, uh, this is also the requirement of future because the treatment on the patient is going, going from the conventional to personalized treatment so in future each biobank uh, each hospital should have a small biobank for the uh, for the good quality of diagnosis and uh, in biobanking strategic and process oriented quality management ensure maintaining continuous high quality and user satisfaction whether a biobank is serving an internal need of a specific organization or providing a resource to outsiders, that sample should be of high quality. And certification or accreditation of biobank based on applicable standards will become increasingly important and enhance the reputation of the biobank and 
development of development in the healthcare. So, uh, accreditation body like IS 20387 will also increase the confidence in a biobank output and assessors stakeholders that crucial requirements are being successfully met. Furthermore, accreditation will create a framework for greater consistency and reliability of biological material to increase the value and reliability in their use in research and other applications. Again, I would like to thank QAI team for launching ISO 20387 in India. Thank you, Dr. Anand. Thank you so much, Dr. Varin, for your wonderful words. And I think it gives really an uh, immense pleasure to the team who has been working in developing this program for last several months and is really delighted to hear your words that how important it is and how curious um, the biobank would be. And I'm sure that as we discussed um, last week as well, that, that the biobank would proceed, would be proceeding for accreditation, uh, which already set the benchmark uh, through uh, standards from Canada and, and several other things bringing down your expertise. So thank you so much, Brain, uh, with this. And, and once again, um, uh, it's really a pleasure having you here today. Thank you. With this, uh, moving on to the uh, next item. Uh, with this, uh, I would now uh, have the floor for Professor George Dagger who is convener of ISO TC 276 Working Group 2, Biobanks and Bioresources. And this working group is responsible for developing the standard ISO 23387. So Professor George, we are really delighted to have you here with us today. And no better person than you can you know, talk about this standard 20387. And we, including myself and my colleagues and all the people who are joined this webinar, today are fortunate to be here to listen to you and, 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 and get enriched from, the, from this standard. Before I request uh, Professor, I will just uh, would like to you know, uh, introduce you to our uh, uh, dignitaries here. Uh, Professor George is an Emeritus Director of Research at INSUM in France. He is visiting professor at Graz University Medical School. He is an honorary professor at STEM lab at the Chinese Academy of Sciences. He is also the CEO of Paradigm 66, a private company. He started up in France. He is an expert to several governmental institutional and private scientific and ethical advisory boards. He is involved in drafting of more than 30 standards related to biobanking and biomarkers for diagnosis and targeted medicine. He is the convener, as I mentioned, of ISO Working Group on Biobanking and Bioresources at the Technical Committee 276 Biotechnology. Prior to this, he was the vice chair of assembly of members of the Pan-European BBRI ERIC from 2013 to 2016 and the director of biobanks, French infrastructure that network 85 biobanks. He was the director of clinical research infrastructure at INSUM from 2006 to 9 and deputy director of the department of clinical research at the public health institute in some in France from 2009 to 11. He accomplished most of his career in pathophysiological and clinical research at Neckler Hospital, College de France, and Faculty of Medicine, Brussels Hotel Dieu. Please pardon me, Professor, for not pronouncing French properly. He joined the physiological laboratory in Cambridge, UK, as a postdoc fellow in 83 to 85, and was a visiting researcher to biophysics and physio physiological laboratory in Harvard Medical School in Boston in 1982 to 84. He published more than 100 papers in international peer-reviewed journals on hypertension, arterial hypertrophy, obesity, lipid metabolism, manic depression, renal physiology, and transmembrane ion transport. He has several things, awards to his credit. With this, uh, we are really delighted to have you, Professor, and floor is all yours. Over to you, Professor. Thank you. You are muted, Professor. Please unmute yourself. Your mic is off, yet more. Yeah. That's, is that better, I guess. Fantastic, thank you. Thank you, so again, I would like to thank you, Dr. Rana, for your invitation to uh, attend this. 
is to know that uh, Indian biobanks are joining the international trend to implement this ISO 2387 standard, which I, will, I think will much improve the quality of research uh, in different fields. Um, I'm from the biomedical field, so my presentation will be focused mainly on biomedical issues, but I will touch a few words on plant and animal biobanks. Um, okay. So the uh, take home message of my presentation is uh, increased quality, reduced cost, and above all, maintain public trust. Most of our current knowledge on diseases are based on systematic investigation of human biological samples and medical data. Um, the uh, oldest written scripture we have comes from Hindu medicine, where we have Atreya Samhita, sorry for the pronunciation, and uh, parts of Ayurveda, where we have description of internal parts of the body. In China, the, older, the oldest scripture we have is around 2600 before Christ, from the inner canon of Yellow Emperor, where several parts of the body were uh, described. In ancient Egypt, 1,800, several papyrus dealing with practical techniques <clears throat> related to medicine, knowledge about cancer, heart disease, diabetes, etc., and of course, mummification. Closer to us in Alexandria, 290 before Christ, we have two persons, Herophilus and Erasistratus, who are the father of anatomy and pathophysiology. The next step in our knowledge of uh, human diseases comes with the first compound microscope that has been developed in 1590 by two Dutch um, experts, Hans and Zacharias Janssen, which opened the knowledge to the microscopic uh, world. This was further developed by several people to reach the electron microscope and the cryo-electron microscope in 2000. Today, most of the biological resources are stored in biobanks uh, or repositories. The largest biobank facility in Europe is in Fraunhofer in Germany, and the largest biobank facility in the world is in Shenzhen in China. In the last decade, several biobanks has emerged um, as an important driver for scientific activities in different trains, human, animal, plants, microorganisms. The, we have several animal biobanks uh, dealing with animal models for the study of human disease. We have animal biobanks harboring genes from uh, different animals, and these are gamete biobanks for breeding. We have insects biobank, we have biobanks to study zoonosis which could be very helpful in this pandemic uh, uh, era. And we have, of course, biodiversity repositories. Uh, an important point to mention is that in Europe, we have developed European infrastructure that regroups several biobanks from different countries. We have Embark, which regroups biobanks dealing with marine animals all across Europe. Infrafrontier, which regroups Biobanks dealing with mouse models, MIRI, which regroups biobanks dealing with microorganisms, Eugenia um, dealing with animal genetic resources, and I forgot to mention BBMRI, which regroups human biological samples, and there are about uh, 500 biobanks in BBMRI infrastructure. In plant biobanks, we have, of course, biobanks dealing with bi biodiversity, and of course, crop repositories for research and agriculture. In the biomedical field, by making use of biological resources, genomics, proteomics, and imaging techniques has achieved major progress in the last decades. 
we gained knowledge about the pathogenicity of several infectious disease of worldwide importance, like meningitis, diphtheria, typhus, influenza, malaria, dengue, SARS, COVID. We have also gained a lot of knowledge about genetic association, uh, which has been uh, uh, identified in several common complex diseases like diabetes, different types of cancer, neurodegenerative diseases, uh, uh, Crohn's disease. Despite all these advances on the pathophysiology, there are significant issues and limitations that are restricting the broad implementation of these technologies, that is genomic, proteomics, metabolomics, and the health field. So we have a number of bottlenecks like sample storage, quality of samples, and related data, fragmentation of research, redundancy, ethical and legal issues, and sustainability of infrastructure. I want today to focus on the quality of samples and related data. Quality of samples, as has been mentioned by several of the previous speaker, can be bottlenecks for diagnosis and research. In the biomedical field, quality of samples can raise several issues, the ontological issues, ethical issues, and economic issues. And I will try to be, in a very concise way, give you some examples. In the field of diagnosis, I just want to get rid of my, yeah, that might be. So it is estimated that more than 70% of clinical decisions are based on information derived from laboratory test results. We have diagnostic errors, <clears throat> which goes about 10% of all patient deaths and about 17% of adverse effects. And this is a study done in the United States. <clears throat> the pre-analytical phase accounts for 46% to 68% of such errors. The pre-analytical phase is the phase going from the collection of the sample from the patient to its analysis. This unnecessary expansion uh, caused by pre-analytical errors can be extrapolated to a typical US hospital and it would cost 1.2 million per year. And these diagnostic errors are mainly related to an inappropriate, to a bad quality of samples due to uh, mishandlings of the samples in the pre-analytical phase. In the field of research, in a survey done in 2009, researchers from 80% of more than 700 laboratories in the United States said that they struggled to obtain standardized or good quality specimens for biomarker research. Biomedical research is facing a reproducibility crisis. Um, it has been estimated that the uh, prevalence of non-reproducible research, preclinical research, exceeds 50%. And this results in approximately $28 billion per year spent on preclinical research that is not reproducible, $28 billion per year. And this is partly caused by pre-analytical errors and quality of samples. Reproducibility is a complex issue. I don't want to deal with this in this presentation, but it's enough to mention that the quality of samples and reagents is one of the factors, and this can account to about 30% of the non-reproducible results, costing in the United States a sum of seven to eight billion dollars per year. What is true in the United States is probably true in France, and other European countries, and maybe other countries in the world. Unfortunately, unfortunately, we are lacking such studies in many, many countries. This non-reproducibility has gone public. How science goes wrong is the um, 
has been published by the economist and this led us to the a loss of public trust in research in the biomedical field and probably in other fields and the uh, pandemic today and the discussions about uh, the pandemic today is also contributing to such loss of public trust. How do we deal with this? Several experts proposed that uh, to improve the standards so that we could improve the reproducibility in science. We have several publications in international journals of high quality, like Lancet Nature, for instance, or Cancer Research, all asking to increase uh, the uh, reproducibility in science by implementing or raising the standards. So this highlights the necessity to develop and implement standards covering the pre-analytical and analytical phase for human biological resources. So again, the take home message is increased quality, improved diagnosis, reduce cost and maintain public trust. In my opinion, an appropriate quality of samples in the biomedical field relies on three pillars, the control of pre-analytical variables, quality management and quality control. How do we control pre-analytical variables? This is a, an example of a, um, a tissue which has been taken from the surgery room up to the analysis. And these are different phases or steps that the tissue is modified, analyzed uh, before going to its final analysis. So we have the transport from the surgical room to uh, the laboratory. We have sample processing, aliquoting, freezing, cryo storage, fixation of the tissue, embedding diagnosis, storage time, sample preparation, and finally analysis. Some of these um, steps um, or processes are not avoidable, are not controllable. For instance, warm ischemia is a totally uncontrollable step when removing a tissue from, it, from the body. Sample processing is also very hard to control. Um, diagnosis, the time, required for diagnosis can be hardly controlled. Others can be very much controlled like freezing temperature, cryo storage temperature, embedding temperature, storage time temperature, temperature sample preparation. And some can be partly controlled like transport temperature, like sample processing, etc. So you can see in the process of taking a sample or a tissue from the body to its analysis, there are different variables that can influence the quality of samples or alter the quality of samples. To better control the quality of samples in this pre-analytical phase, we have developed an ISO TC212. It's a different technical committee than the TC276 that developed the biobanking standard. We have def uh, developed 22 standards related to the pre-analytical phase. These deal with solid tissues like paraffin embedded tissues and the isolation of DNA, RNA proteins from paraffin tissue the um, isolation of RNA, DNA, and proteins from frozen tissue, fine needle aspirates, and the isolation of DNA, RNA, and proteins from these aspirates. We have also standards related to whole body, isolation of DNA, RNA, uh, cell-free DNA from venous whole blood, et cetera, et cetera. And we have one on metabolomics and one on urine and saliva and the extraction or isolation of DNA from saliva or urine or stool. So these 22 standards we think could contribute to the uh, better controlling different variables that could affect 
the quality of samples in the pre-analytical stage, going from the collection of the tissue from the patient to its analysis. The two other pillars, quality management and quality control, are dealt with, with the, by the ISO 2387. When we started working on 2387, we had a survey and asked the question, do you have guidelines or best practices for biobanks in different fields? And the answer was yes, more than 80 guidelines and best practices for biobanks existed when we started five years ago working on 2387. Now the question was, which one is the most appropriate to be implemented? Uh, and of course, each country or each international organization, organization so that its guideline or best practice is the best or most appropriate to be implemented. When we looked at the content of these standards, we saw that 85% of the requirements of these different standards, we have selected about 18 of these standards, international standards mainly, and we have compared their uh, content, 85% of the requirements do overlap, which is a very good basis to start a uh, international standard for biobanks. So 70 experts from 30 countries had at least 20 face-to-face -face meetings, uh, plus five rounds of international comments led by ISO, and this led us to one international standard, which is the quintessence of more than 80 guidelines and best practices for biobanking. So I do insist it's not biobanks, it's biobanking that is the activity of biobanks, which covers more than what could be a definition of biobanks. So this standard is called International Norm for General Requirements for Biobanking, and it is common to animal, human, microorganism, and plant. So it covers all ranges of um, uh, biological resources. It is intended to be an overarching uh, arcing standard to most biobanks, uh, and it has three pillars, personnel competence, validation of methods, and quality control of biological resources. Major chapters, personnel competence training and assessment, access, collection, processing, storage, transport, validation of methods, characterization of biological resources, quality control of biological resources, process-related quality control, and data-related quality control. Uh, to help implementing this standard in different countries, we developed a guide uh, to help different quality managers and researchers to understand and implement this international standard. And this guide was um, published as a technical report, ISO TR 22758, and it's entitled Implementation Guide for ISO 2387. As I said, this biobanking standard is an overarching standard, and under this biobanking standard comes a number of other technical um, specifications dealing with biological resources, like animal resources, plant genetic resources, validation of methods. So we do have a validation and verification of method uh, under this overarching standard, a cell culture, technical specification, a technical specification dealing with mesenchymal cells from umbilical cord, and another one from bone marrow. Uh, we do have a technical specification for um, animal genetic resources, another one from plant genetic resources, and we have one related to microbial database. So again, the take home message is increase quality, reduce costs, foster research and development, and above all, maintain public trust. Thank you very much.
Thank you very much, Professor George, for your wonderful um, overview of the, the, the journey in developing the standard 20387 and associated standards uh, which were consulted and the process for that. So thank you so much. And it was really indeed a pleasure listening to this. And I think we would definitely come back to you at an appropriate time for more elaborative um, explanation on the standards so that we can get more insight into the standard. So thank you once again, Dr. Uh, Professor Georges. So moving on to the next agenda now, uh, I have a very eminent person uh, with us today. And uh, in fact, um, I have been associated with him last more than 15 years. And in fact, we have a webinar together in today morning with Ministry of Ayush. Uh, now I have uh, the pleasure of inviting uh, Mr. Anil Jauri. He is the, the former CEO of National Accreditation Board for Certification Body and Quality Council of India. He's an international expert on conformity assessment. He, uh, before joining QCI in 2006, he has been with um, the Bureau of Indian Standard, which is our national standard um, uh, body, NSB. Uh, he, 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 the last position he has, our uh, scientist F and head of a division in Bureau of Indian Standards. So he served BI as for not one, two, three years, but for full 26 years. And it's a long journey in his organization and that to a national institute. Um, currently, uh, he is associated with several national and international organizations in different cap capacities. Just to name a few, he is a CDM, which is Clean Development Mechanism Accreditation Panel member of United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. He is also a member of Yoga Certification Board, member of Naturopathy Certification Board. He is leading a, a committee, scientific committee as a chair for developing guidelines for good clinical practices under CDSA, Department of Biotechnology. He is the lead assessor for NABCB and also an international evaluator for Asia Pacific Accreditation Corporation and International Accreditation Forum, IAF. He is most sort of, uh, a speaker on conformity assessment and accreditation. He is basically a civil engineer from Punjab Engineering College and a master of technology uh, from IIT Kanpur. And I think I have no other words to, to describe his, his, his no, immense knowledge into accreditation and conformity assessment. And so I thought that why not invite uh, Mr. Jari and he has been kind, very kind to accept and grace this occasion. With this, sir, uh, floor is all yours. Over to you. Please talk about your um, expert opinions and views on this. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, Dr. Rana, for that very, uh, very kind introduction uh, uh, to me. Uh, I am very glad to be uh, here in this uh, program, to be invited by you. I should congratulate you first for uh, launching this accreditation program as per international standards. Well, I have been a great advocate of adopting international standards from day one in India and have uh, pushed everybody around to, to this thought that by default, we should think international standards and there is no room for uh, national standards which are lower than international standards. So I'm very glad to see that you have, uh, you have adopted uh, and started an accreditation program as per an international standard, which is very, very new. Uh, I should also congratulate you for organizing this program and getting uh, Professor Dagger um, here, you know, I have been pushing BIS unsuccessfully, I would say that it is BIS job to get, you know, when a new ISO standards comes, it is BIS job to promote that standard in the country and get the best expert around uh, to speak to us, uh, preferably somebody who's involved in developing that standard. And I think uh, Dr. Rana has beaten BIS into that. This is something that BIS should perform. Uh, and I always say that you should get somebody who was involved in developing the standard, who's a practitioner and who was involved in developing the standard. I mean, by reading a standard, becoming an expert is easier, but I need to know from the horse's mouth uh, who developed the standard, why they wrote what they wrote. Because what they wrote is there on the paper. Why they wrote that is seldom there on the paper. And we sometimes need to know why they wrote that. So I'm very uh, delighted that you did that and invited uh, somebody from the uh, ISO committee here. Um, I mean, uh, there are two parts to uh, uh, to having international standards uh, into our system. One is, of course, to start an accreditation program like you have done, which is great. Uh, you being the first one to start this, 
uh, the, the other part is to get the program internationally accepted. You are very well aware of what that uh, involves, uh, which means going to the international bodies and doing what it takes to, to get the program internationally accepted, which in our case means going to your regional body APAC and seeking uh, peer evaluation and joining part of the MRA and then finally going to ILAC uh, MRA. Uh, you know, um, I was in NABCV, as you know, we joined, in fact, for the audience, uh, Dr. Rana and I joined the same larger organization, Polity Council of India, maybe a few days difference in January of 2006. And while he left in, I think, 2017, I stayed on till I retired in 2019. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, in, in, in earlier, uh, even in NABCV, we, we had our international equivalence peer evaluation for uh, QMS uh, accreditation program way back in 2002, then you know that the peer evaluation takes place every four years. So there's a tendency among accreditation bodies that they go for addition of scopes when there is a, a peer evaluation due. So we did follow the same uh, philosophy and we went for EMS in our peer evaluation in 2006 and got equivalence in 2007. Then in 2011, we went for equivalence of our product certification accreditation scheme and finally got that equivalence in 2013. But when I took over as CEO in February of 2013, I changed that, uh, changed that thinking. And I decided that as soon as we launch a program, uh, as early as it is possible after granting a couple of accreditations, we should go for international equivalence and not wait for the four yearly cycle of uh, re-evaluations uh, by APAC. At that time, it was PSE. Now, of course, it's APAC. And therefore, in from 2013 to 2019, you'll be surprised the number of peer evaluations uh, NABC we underwent. We had, an, I think, two in 2013, one in 2014, one in 2016, in 2017. And just three months before or four months before my retirement, in March of 2019, we had another peer evaluation to add personal certification into our portfolio. It had two advantages. One was that, of course, we got our international equivalences quicker and we have a whole bouquet of international equivalences with us today. And second was it actually removed the fear in the minds of my officers about peer evaluation as a peer evaluation. The four yearly peer evaluation was a huge event. We made, made, we made peer evaluation like another event. Every year there was a peer evaluation. Nobody was bothered that there's a peer evaluation. There was no special preparation. You just keep functioning and you face a peer evaluation. And that was actually very good for uh, NABCB that we, we did not think peer relation was something which was a huge event and they required huge preparation and you know special effort, et cetera, et cetera. So um, especially for Dr. Rana, I think my piece of advice uh, would be given that he's in private sector and he knows the challenges more than me of uh, how difficult it is uh, for private sector uh, entities to gain acceptance in the market uh, in India, especially from the government. Uh, that uh, a peer evaluation and international equivalence would be a great help in in uh, you know in in gaining acceptance and uh, uh, therefore my own advice to Dr. Rana every time he speaks to me has been when are you going to APAC for peer evaluation I am glad to see that he has become associate member of APAC and shortly I, I hope that we will see that he gets himself peer evaluated and I would be glad to see that. India remains at the forefront of uh, new programs. I, I, I actually admire Dr. Rana that he is choosing very, very new ideas. So it, for accreditation, also in healthcare, I've, I'm just not saying I'm not a healthcare person. So I, I'm just a quiet bystander as far as health, healthcare is concerned. But I'm noticing that he's picking up, you know, virgin territory, which is a very wise strategy in certain ways. Of course, he's not chasing numbers. That means he's more chasing new areas. And uh, it's good to do that and also, um, uh, you know, advance India's name internationally that in new areas, we are up there. We don't wait. We don't waste too much time getting into the front seat as far as, you know, international standards in new areas are concerned. So I would, uh, again, uh, congratulate you, Dr. Rana, for this um, excellent uh, initiative that you have done. And I wish you all the best, you and QAI, all the best. And I'm very glad you had this. Uh, Professor Dagger uh, coming up and speaking to us, and I hope you can get him for more. Pro I mean, this standard would need more publicity in India, and I hope you can uh, get him again uh, to speak to the biobanks directly, 
the potential uh, clients that you have uh, so that they understand the standard because understanding of a standard is very necessary uh, before people implement and come for accreditation here so and i hope professor uh, will spare some more time for india uh, from his busy schedule uh, thank you very much again uh, dr rana for inviting me and i wish you all the best thank you very much thank you so much sir for your wonderful uh, words and it really encourages me personally and all of us the team uh, to really move forward and we would definitely try our best to live up to the expectations you have just set in and uh, we will be moving soon for apac our apac uh, mra application form maybe this month or maybe next month and uh, that is what we target set for for international equivalence and and we always uh, been uh, blessed by your advice and we definitely look and i am really delighted now to to welcome our special guest and key stakeholder shri upanyu basu ji he has just joined and he has uh, really grateful sir to you for your joining i know you had a, a medical emergency and but but it is really uh, kind of you that you could uh, uh, still find some time and and grace this occasion which is very very important not only for qi but uh, i would say it is for our country because we are perhaps going to be the third country starting this accreditation program in asia pacific region after uh, us and china so this is really a, a important event and and we are really grateful that you have accepted our invitation and and this so before i hand over the floor to you sir i am just would like to introduce yourself to uh, the, the 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 audience here sri upmanya basu ji is our special guest and key stakeholder in this event he is an officer of indian revenue service government of india currently he holds the position of joint secretary in livestock health <clears throat> in ministry of fisheries animal husbandry and dairying and before that he has assumed very senior and key positions like commissioner of income tax and appeals uh, financial advisor to the university grants commission director of department of higher education and mhrd in government of india a director of ita in, in central board of directors assist tax ministry of finance government of india and has been leading central governing council of export promotion council for uh, negotiations in special economic zones he has been a, a joint uh, a, a, and deputy and assistant commissioner uh, investigation in income tax department and ministry of finance and government of india and and, and also been associated with national bank of for agriculture and rural development navad in mumbai in ha handling their policy issues relating to refinances facilities Uh, he holds master in science in mycology and plant pathology from indian agriculture research institute iri pusa and master in public health from lee kwan yew school of public policy national university of singapore uh, from singapore uh, he has really been uh, uh, you know supportive of this initiative with this sir i welcome you and uh, i would now request you to please uh, give your uh, launch address to the gathering uh, the floor is yours sir thank you so much thank you very much at the uh, outset i just want to tell the audience here that my life has been a rolling stone gathers no moss because i have been moving from one department to other and that's what a bureaucrat does but nevertheless qi is a very important concept because basically it builds trust on the consumer whoever is the consumer at any point of time it is the trust and that is how it a consumer has an informed decision i mean it's a very general kind of a thing i'll not go into specifics as i uh, i mean of course the biobank is a very very good um, initiative but then again unless we have a quality check you know the um, thing would be of no use at the end of the day and then i am also proud to see that we are the country after us and china i mean really that shows remarkable progress done by many people and especially dr rana and his men and of course we in the ministry we are also a consumer in many products for example myself and dr malik we are jointly responsible for animal vaccination in the country Uh, and uh, uh, it will not be out of the way if i say that had our quality check been more persistent more equipped things would not be what they stand 
as on date. With this, I think uh, I should really thank Dr. Rana and my entire audience that this is a, a very good initiative and uh, must we must all of us must support this and uh, so that again as i uh, you know mentioned that trust unless there is a trust nothing can move every activity can move only if there is a trust because after all a consumer uh, you know needs to take a decision and then unless it is informed maybe there is you know uh, improper decision which affects many stakeholders on the line. So with this, uh, I think Dr. Rana, we can um, start the launch. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you very much. And, and, and I think I, I request my colleague, uh, Rema, uh, to please uh, 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 start the launch video, please, with the permission yes. of uh, Mr. Basu. Yes, yes. yes. Sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Rema, please. Thank you, thank you. Sir. Okay. Thank you, Rema. Thank you very much uh, for um, the, this wonderful Rema. My colleague is really credited for preparing this uh, short video for for this, and hope you guys uh, liked it. Simply uh, wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you so much, sir. And I think really uh, wonderful to have you. And uh, uh, I will now come to um, uh, the last leg of our uh, launch ceremony, and with the permission of you, sir. And now I would like to invite our chief guest, uh, Dr. Praveen Malik. Uh, is the Animal Husbandry Commissioner Government of India and Dr. Malik how can I in that, Science how can I that Dr. University. Malik is not only my friend, philosopher and guide, but is the National Animal Husbandry Commissioner and the advisor to the government. Welcome. Uh, so, so, so we are really grateful um, having uh, Dr. Malik uh, over here and you have been a guiding force and I think um, if I have something related to animal husbandry, something I reach out to uh, Dr. Praveen Malik and Dr. Bas, Mr. Basu. And I, I'm, I'm sure that I'm not disturbing you both. And every now and then, I'm calling you and texting your mobile phones, but I take this privilege of your being so much uh, proactive in this field to improve uh, the quality of life through different mechanisms in, in your ministry. So it's really wonderful to have you. And with this, um, the, I have uh, the pleasure of inviting Dr. Malik and Sir, floor is all yours. Over to you, please. Uh, thank you, Dr. Rana. Thank you very much. And uh, first of all, uh, my congratulations and compliments to you for launching this wonderful uh, uh, standards uh, for this biobanking. In fact, uh, this was a re requirement for, for very, very long. In, uh, in fact, uh, after the uh, initiation of uh, the QMS programs in India that 9001, uh, 2008 onwards generally, people have started talking on slowly coming to the field of uh, accreditation and all those things and 
slowly people are into laboratory for laboratory accreditation into the uh, uh, hospitals for hospital accreditations uh, probably the program which uh, where you were also involved uh, long back uh, with an nabh so uh, that kind of mechanism slowly now people are coming into different uh, uh, standardization and accreditation processes and in fact it's a wonderful thing uh, to understand the significance of uh, this particular biobanking process specifically for uh, not only uh, uh, the scope you have uh, given uh, on the animals and the plants and the microbes or the multicellular organisms uh, or, or the body tissues and all other things it's really a thing where we are basically not only talking about the preservation as such, but we are talking about the whole process of acquisition, collection, procurement, uh, testing, analyzing, and then distributing and disposing of. So it means uh, through and through all the activities related to the biobanks, uh, and specifically when we have been talking about biobanks uh, for me, uh, as animal husbandry commissioner, uh, as a microbiologist, as a veterinarian, basically we look into two different aspects. One is related to my uh, 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 microbes, which are not only the disease pathogens, but also the helpful microbes uh, useful in the dairy industry. We have got microbes available with the uh, uh, rumin ruminant or animals, which are very, very helpful for uh, and uh, different kind of activities uh, within the human, like uh, methane reduction and uh, uh, some kind of uh, degradation of some of those uh, nutrients. And then we have got pathogens also on the other side. So together, these are very, very important thing. In fact, when I was working with the, the repository on uh, animal microbes uh, right there in Hisar long back as a microbiologist and heading that particular institution, uh, I was wondering, like, uh, we have been uh, working on these biobanks, uh, but we need to have, uh, have some kind of standards to basically maintain and have the similar kind of things. So these SOPs were there, but we, need, we, we were requiring these kind of uh, real standards, which will be really helpful uh, in maintaining those uh, uh, particular uh, uh, repositories. Similarly, we have got semen stations uh, where uh, the sperms are uh, being uh, banked and uh, these are being used. Similarly, we have got cell lines, we have got uh, different uh, biological resources which are very, very important, including uh, the uh, serum which are negative, positive, or maybe infected uh, uh, from the infected or the vaccinated organ uh, animals. Uh, we have be, uh, got uh, these kind of uh, systems. So it, it, overall, the requirement of these biological resources and then the quality we need uh, from these biological resources from different uh, uh, fields. It's really very, very important. And I really am thankful to uh, Dr. Rana and his team from QAI to come up with these kind of wonderful uh, uh, standards uh, applicable and implemented in India now. So I hope uh, different uh, uh, divisions and different uh, departments and institutions across different sectors, be it uh, uh, medical sciences, be it uh, uh, veterinary sciences, be it uh, dairy sciences, or the dairy industry, uh, they should take help and uh, uh, get benefit uh, be benefited from the, these uh, uh, ISO 20387 uh, standards. So uh, I once uh, again uh, compliment uh, uh, you, your team, and would like to uh, thank uh, the uh, team uh, chaired by Professor Vikram Kumar and uh, Dr. Uh, Pramod Bajaj uh, in uh, helping you out in uh, uh, developing these standards and implementing these standards in India. Uh, in fact, uh, when I was talking about uh, having these uh, standards uh, set up, not only this particular biobank, uh, it's also 17025, which I am mainly concerned with uh, as a laboratory person. So uh, basically, when initially it was only NABL, and slowly uh, uh, one or two or three more organizations uh, have joined the hands in uh, providing this accreditation services. Uh, only today, I have got uh, another letter from one uh, of uh, another uh, agency like this, uh, uh, in which has come into. Uh, 
uh, this particular uh, field. So it's like a growing field, a, a kind of market which has been generated in, uh, in, in India. We have got uh, institutions like NBAGR, NBPGR, NBFGR in ICR, where they are basically looking into the genetic material, uh, their preser preservation and their bankings. So probably these kind of standards will be useful uh, for these sectors also where they are basically preserving the germplasm uh, for futures to be used, uh, the standards to be uh, maintained uh, for uh, the vaccine industry, for the drug industry, for research and development, also for the quality testing and all other things uh, within the same system. So it's going to be a, a long way. It's going to be very, very beneficial to all the sectors, I hope. And I would like to thank and compliment all the team uh, from QA as associate. Thank you very much, Dr. Bukhangana, and uh, congratulations once again. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Malik. Uh, it's really been a, a, a great pleasure of having you here. And along with uh, Mr. Basu, it makes uh, the event uh, more important than as a stakeholder because, as you mentioned, we have been researching in the last several months uh, to search uh, how many biobank, which type of biobanks exist, and we could make a database of uh, what we could get from internet. And we would definitely seek your help and advice and coming to you both for uh, support in, in, in moving forward. So, so thank you once again. And I think this has been a, a, a great, uh, great time with you all. And I'm happy to say that um, here uh, we invited, as you mentioned, sir, that um, uh, in, uh, it was an NABL before, and I'm happy that uh, I was I was one of the uh, eight officers who joined in '99 in NABL to kick off. And Jory, sir, we faced the APAC evaluation for the first time in uh, in in the month of June 2000. So in just six months, we prepared everything and then go for the MRA. So we are now working for QI as well. And uh, we invited, extended our invitation to join this program to NABL also and FDS. I think you got the letter from FDS. And uh, so they have represented here, they send their representative to attend this program. So I'm, I'm really thankful to them. And in fact, uh, we have a, a, one of the senior delegates coming from Nepal accreditation body, uh, Mr. Dr. Sita Ram Joshi. He's a CEO of uh, Nepal accreditation body who got uh, APAC uh, MRA last month and we have been working together. So this is again a cross-border thing. We work in, in sync and, and help and support each other to move forward. So thank you everyone. And um, uh, thank you Vikram sir for uh, joining in here. Thank you, Dr. George. Thank you, Dr. Malik, uh, Mr. Basu uh, uh, for joining in and all my technical committee team uh, chair and team members who are here present. And Dr. Where you are, uh, Dr. Venkates, our mentor, always guiding us uh, as our advisor and mentor on that. And I, and the important thing here is that in very limited uh, gathering of 50, 55 people, most of them are all stakeholders. You know, they are coming from biobanks. So we are really grateful, thankful, uh, Dr. Veena for you, uh, for your attending for I and NBPGR. And there are several from Tata, I think, from Rajiv Gandhi and several other. Uh, Dr. Gita, I saw somewhere, Dr. Uh, Charitha, I saw, because we, we found out you guys through uh, internet surfing that where you are located and what you are doing. So we could reach out uh, to you all and we definitely look forward to working with you in time to come to take your biobanks uh, for this accreditation process, which would definitely send benchmarks. So um, I hope I'm not missing out. I, it, all of you are key for us, for the success of this program and, and we would extend our support in, in, in making you successful in accreditation, whatever possible we can. And we look forward for your continuous support working together. And and, and thank you so much, Jory, sir. I'm, I'm, I'm sure you will continue guiding us in, in this our important uh, endeavor. And with this, I, I seek permission from uh, my chairman, uh, Professor Vikram Kumar, uh, our uh, special guest, key stakeholder, uh, Mr. Upanya Basu, chief guest, Dr. Malik, and our guest of honor, Mr. Jari and Dr. Professor Georges, and a special invitee, Vijay Virinda, and Dr. Bajaj, and all your biobank representative in key positions. So uh, to, to uh, close this uh, event, and I hope you, you have enjoyed. <laughs> uh, this is another um, uh, you know, a remote event, but I think uh, this has been a, a great event, and I'm sure with the support of all of you, we would be getting success, uh, not only within India, like Vikram Sar said, it's not only India, but in other parts of the world, because it's a new area. 
and many um, country would be requiring this and they may not be having this accreditation program as uh, this is today so we would be definitely happy to uh, go anywhere they, who requires our services so with this i see the blessings uh, of all of you support of all of you and now the permission of all of you to to close this event Thank and before, you, before, before 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 that uh, we go please switch on your video so that we can click some beautiful photograph as an evidence of this event please okay. uh, yes please uh, yeah. switch on your thank you dr rana for invitation thank you ma'am and we hope a uh, good collaboration in future with you Sub certainly madam certainly yeah please switch on your video so that we can click uh, uh, photograph we, we, because we believe in objective evidence you know for the conformity yes. <laughs> quality control first it needs to <laughs> Then yes, then those evidence is more sure. Yeah, you know there is a saying in our world which says, "In God we trust." They all have to show evidence. So, Doctor Anna has yes. to show evidence. Yeah, yes. yeah, we have to show the evidence, and and also, sir, as we say, that no no evidence, uh, no record, then it is not done. It's Correct. Not <laughs> it's not. Please present. share, please share this photograph with us, Doctor Anna. Certainly, madam. Yes, Certainly. yes, so that we can also publicize this event. Okay. Evidence is an important part Thank of you. any quality system. Thank you, you sir. Would... Thank you. Thank you very much, all of you, for your great time and support in the, making this event a success. Thank you so much. Have a yeah, nice, day. nice day. Bye bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank, thank you. you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Manishwar, thank you so much for your giving your time in your um, medical conditions. Really appreciate, sir. Thank you so much.